Thank you very much, Mark, for a good start to a great weekend that we have together. This is a historic day for the Francis Schaeffer Institute and for Covenant Theological Seminary, not only because it's the 30th anniversary of the founding of the FSI, the Francis Schaeffer Institute. Uh, it was begun in 1989 when Jerem Bars arrived, so 30 years of FSI with Jerem Bars in that place. Covenant Seminary has a deep commitment to the Bible and theology, to God's truth, for the sake of the church and its mission in God's world. And by the grace of God, the situating of the Francis Schaeffer Institute in the midst of Covenant Seminary for the last 30 years, with its uncompromising commitment to God's truth that includes love for our neighbors and winsome gospel engagement of the culture, Covenant Seminary has not only that commitment to the Bible and theology, but to where it lands and the commitment that it must land with both the message of Jesus and the manner of Jesus. We, uh, by the, the vision and commitment of people in the late 90s, a Francis Schaeffer Endowed Chair for Apologetics was established. And over the years, the last 20 years, there have been many generous gifts to that. And I'm happy to announce that that chair, that $2 million endowment chair, has been fully funded. And so I want to uh, name two people in particular, one at the front end who gave a very generous gift to start the chair, and one at the back end that gave the completing generous gift to complete it. And we have people here this morning from those two families. John and Anne Albritton were the beginning uh, visionaries that gave generously for the establishment of the chair. And their son, James, who was an early director of the Schaefer Institute, is with us. James, if you could stand and stay standing. And Ed and Deanne Harris, uh, Ed went to be with the Lord a few years ago, but Deanne is with us today. They gave the generous gift at the back end. And I'm going to ask Deanne, you're out there somewhere, to stand. There's Deanne. Let's express our appreciation to these two. What this means is that that $2 million is in our endowment, and an interest draw from that every year funds fully um, the person who is sitting in the chair as a full-time person in the Francis Schaeffer Institute. Um, and what this means is for many years to come, as long as there's a covenant seminary, that money is restricted to be used for that only, which means that the core of the seminary that has the Francis Schaeffer Institute in the midst of us will continue. Um, now, the person who's been sitting in a half chair <laughs> for 20 years is Jaron Bars, and he now gets to sit in a full chair, and I'd like him to come up now. Thank you so much. Yeah, please sit down. <laughs> yeah, there's several people uh, I want to say thank you to. Um, first, I, I want to thank, uh, even though they're not with us any longer, Edith and Francis Schaefer for their impact on my life and on Vicky's life. And a very special thanks to them uh, for the chair. When the idea of the chair was first proposed, over 20 years ago now, just as with the founding of the Schaefer Institute itself, my response was, well, we can't do this unless Edith agrees. And we're not prepared to use 
Schaefer's name without her uh, approval. And so I went to speak to her uh, about it. Just a little background there, Vicky and I and Edith were very close. Uh, Vicky was Schaefer's secretary, I was Edith's gardener and cook, and uh, we met at a little prayer meeting Edith had every morning in their home in Switzerland, and that's how we got to know each other. So Edith was close to us, having been there at the very beginning of our relationship. So I went to Edith and asked her uh, if she was in agreement to us having a Francis Schaefer Chair of Apologetics here and me being the first person to sit in it. And she went off to pray, uh, as she did about everything, and she came back and said yes, she would be delighted. Uh, and she knew that Francis would have been delighted uh, as well. And so I'm confident that the Lord has let them know that this has happened uh, today and that they are glad about it. Second, I want to thank the donors, uh, many, many donors, but very especially James' parents, John and Anne Albritton, who gave that first substantial gift, and uh, dear Deanne, uh, another very dear friend who's completed it uh, with her husband, Ed. So thank you to all those who gave so generously. Third, I want to thank Mark Dolby and John Mannheim and all the development team for all their faithful work in finding donors for this and every other part of the seminary's life. Uh, fourth, I want to thank Mark Ryan uh, and Jerry Reimer uh, and all my colleagues on the faculty and staff here. Uh, you know, this is really a place which isn't like the Gentiles lording it over each other, but has been a place where there's a joy in serving together, and it's been a joy to serve with all of you. Fifth, I, I want to thank my beloved wife, Vicki. Uh, without her, I would have accomplished absolutely nothing in my life. So, And my dear family, uh, some of whom are here today. And sixth, of course, I want to thank the Lord. It's been a joy to serve here at this seminary at the Schaefer Institute for the past uh, 30 years uh, and I feel just overwhelmingly honored to be the first person to occupy this chair. Thank you so much. Let's pray together. O oh, Good Shepherd, we praise you. We thank you for the way you came to find Jerem as his mom and dad read about you and told stories about you in their home. And we thank you for the way that you whispered your voice to Jerem through Lewis and Tolkien and story and wonder. We thank you for the kind way you revealed yourself to him through that very dear woman who taught the children about you, where he lived in his home village. We thank you profoundly for the way that day at Alderley Edge in the Chesser Hills, mm. when he thought there was no meaning or reason to live. We, mm. oh, thank you for opening his eyes to see all your wonders and your beauty. We thank you, Lord, for a Canadian friend named Mike, how you spoke of yourself through him to Jerem. We thank you for Francis and Edith. We thank you for how you've shown yourself to Jerem, through Vicky, through many dangers, toils, snares, mm. sins, you've sustained them. You have been so good and kind. Thank you for every way you have revealed yourself 
to him through his children and grandchildren. And we thank you for the fruitfulness of your ministry in his life. The many generations of spiritual children and grandchildren who give thanks to you for what we've seen of you in his life. And we now ask, Lord, that you would continue to bless him with a deep sense of your glad delight in him, how you have raised him up upon your shoulders and celebrated that the one you loved who was lost was found. We thank you for all the friends and neighbors that you invite to celebrate him. And we do because we see your glad gaze and we see his gaze upon you. We thank you, good shepherd. In Jesus, your precious name, amen. amen. Well, delightfully, it uh, falls to me also to offer a few words, uh, both uh, to Jerem uh, and then to you all. And as I come to this moment, I can't help but reflect on both the strangeness uh, and the naturalness of it. The strangeness is uh, I would never have chosen uh, this role or this moment for myself. It's always been the grace and the encouragement of Jerem uh, that's opened that door and made it possible for me to serve FSI and you all in this way. The naturalness is I come to this moment having benefited personally uh, from Jerem's ministry uh, and from uh, the ministry of FSI. I came to this place in 1997 uh, as a student and so like many of you in this room, uh, came here for the Schaefer Institute, uh, came here for that uh, fully orbed uh, lived life apologetic of Labrie and found that uh, in ample evidence in the classroom uh, and in the home uh, of the bars. Uh, after that, I served with Labrie Fellowship for almost a decade. And once again, uh, ministering in Labrie found ourselves benefiting uh, from the ministry of FSI as many students would find their way to us and I discovered uh, a great pipeline of Labrie workers who'd been through this institution and took up their home in the ministry of Labrie. Uh, and then more recently moving back to St. Louis uh, in 2008 and serving as a local pastor. And once again, like many of you in the room who serve our campuses and our churches, benefiting uh, from Jerem's teaching ministry, his generosity for coming to teach Sunday school, to shepherd leaders, to step into difficult moments in church life and for conferences like we're about to have this weekend. And then finally, just six years ago, coming to serve uh, as the director of FSI. So with all of those caps and with all of those pieces, Jeremy, let me simply say to you, thank you. Thank you for your service, uh, for your ministry, uh, and for the opportunity uh, that you've afforded. I would say also thank you to you, Vicky. Uh, one of the great delights of these last few years has been the opportunity for Terry and I uh, to get to know you as well, uh, your encouragements to Terry. <clears throat> Our Legion Manifold, deeply appreciated. Um, to Paul and Jenna, who are here, and Corrine, Peter, teaching down the road at Westminster. I think of Philip and Hannah as well. To the family, we say thank you. Uh, we know that often you've sent Jerem out. You've given him up that we might benefit. Uh, so to the Bars family, thank you for your service, for your ministry. The Lord continue to bless you. <clears throat>